tiny superhero, where she writes about managing the life of a child with hypopituitarism. The 31st of January 2014. V is my hero and I mean it. Good morning. This week has been incredibly busy at work, so I'm just sneaking this in during a break. Yesterday, a friend shared a blog with me, written by a mother whose child is special needs. The mother did not like the parents of children with special needs call their children their heroes. She felt that it further marginalised her child, made her child stand out even more, and held her child on a pedestal that it might not want to be on. Her other point was that she did not want her child to be recognised for having a disability. All of these arguments I get and fully understand, but the article angered me on so many levels. Todd and I actually had a lengthy conversation about the blog on our way to pick up V from daycare. It felt good to discuss our views on it and I felt like perhaps you would like to know why I call this blog my tiny superhero and why V is our hero. On January 11, 2013, V stopped breathing at home. We rushed him to the clinic. V should have died. These are not easy words for a mother to say and these memories are painful to think about, but they run through my mind daily. V remained on life support as the doctors tried to decipher what was going on. Through all of it, this tiny baby remained clueless to what was happening. He showed us he was alive by opening his eyes every so often, and he would suck ever so slightly on his ventilator tube. In six days of all of this, V was removed from life support and was going to make a full recovery. If this is not heroic, I don't know what else to call it. V battled an illness many never faced in our time here on Earth. He did it when he was three and a half months only and weighing only nine pounds. He woke up from that fog cooing and smiling. He even smiled at me when he was on the vent. This child is the happiest I've ever been around. Every day V gets medication for his condition. He takes a pill in the morning when he wakes up. We get him dressed and then he gets his second medication. Then we sit down and watch some videos and he gets his first nebulizer treatment of the day. That alone takes us 10 minutes and keeping him still during that time is very challenging. When he gets to school, he gets another nebulizer treatment before lunch. He gets another pill just around 12.30 p.m. Then it's on to his afternoon. When he's ill, he gets nebulizers every four hours because he has asthma. So on the days he's ill, he gets two while he's at daycare. What the fuck is he doing at daycare when he's ill? What the fuck is he even doing at daycare in the first place? What the fuck? He's a medically fragile child. What the fuck is he doing at daycare? Holy shit. What the fuck? When he's ill, he gets nebulizers every four hours because he has asthma. So on the days he's ill, he gets two while he's at daycare. Each treatment takes 10 minutes. When he comes home from daycare, we have dinner. He plays and then he gets his nightly shot of growth hormone, his final pill of the day. That's a lot of medication for a little boy. He's on a dose of thyroid medication that most adults don't take and he does it all with a smile on his face. V doesn't seem to even fathom or understand that he's any different than his friends and I know this because he is so young. We are completely prepared for him to have questions about his disease and why he can't do certain things. My guess is this will present challenges, but I know my son and I have a sense he will take all of this in stride. V has an easy disposition. He's happy most of the time and according to the teachers at daycare, he is one of the easiest babies to manage even with his condition. He rarely cries, isn't needy, generally happy and giggly and will play by himself without any prompting. Do you get a glimpse of why he amazes me every single day? He has a mountain of obstacles in front of him every single day and he just goes on like nothing is bothering him. Even after he gets his shot, he cries but he knows as soon as it's over, he will get cuddle time with mummy. Immediately after, I pick him up. He smiles and we cuddle and nurse as he falls asleep. Each morning he wakes up with a smile on his face. He doesn't wake up crying, ever. I hear him only because he's talking in his crib. I am not putting him on a pedestal by calling him my hero and I do not expect him to be heroic on a daily basis. In fact, I have no expectations in terms of him living up to being a hero at all. He's my hero because he has so many things preventing him from being happy and every single day he is happy. I think so many of us could learn a thing or two from that attitude. As he grows, I expect there will be challenges with managing his condition. 
I expect there will be moments of unrest and unhappiness, but it will not change the fact that he's my hero. The 3rd of February 2014, titled V at the ER, V has RSV and an ear infection. Respiratory senescial virus, or RSV, is a common respiratory virus that usually causes mild, cold-like symptoms. Most people recover in a week or two, but RSV can be serious, especially for infants and older adults. Please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. His home is pretty sick. We've spent the morning at the ER. He's managing his blood sugars just fine, but his breathing is laboured and spiked a fever of 103.5 this morning. RSV and AI. Adrenal insufficiency, including Addison's disease, is a disorder that occurs when the adrenal glands don't make enough of certain hormones. These include cortisol, sometimes called the stress hormone, which is essential for life. 4th of February 2014. Today started out horribly and it ended with a tantrum. V woke up breathing really fast. Immediately I got the nebulizer and gave him a treatment. Afterwards I realised he was really hot. I took his temp and it was 103.5. That's scary for any child, but for one with adrenal insufficiency, it's terrifying. We packed our stuff and left for the hospital. We were seen immediately. V was swabbed and they suctioned him. He came back positive for RSV and he has an ear infection in his right ear. This is ear infection number five in six months. We went to x-ray and his left lung was cloudy. The doctor was concerned it was pneumonia. We can't confirm it, but she's treating him with an antibiotic that would help if it was pneumonia. We talked in length about his breathing issues over the past month and the doctor agreed it was time for V to get on a preventative drug for asthma. It seems as though his lungs are weak with asthma and any illness makes him sicker than he should be. Today we started and she goes on with all the medication, blah, blah, blah. RSV sucks, plain and simple. V's cranky, tired, clingy and crying a lot. I've never seen him this sick since his release from hospital last year. I'm beat and I'm using a PTO again to care for him. It's so exhausting thinking about work and the worrying about him. I may not be on much this week. Please keep V in your thoughts and prayers. We need them. RSV stinks. The 6th of February 2014. It's been quite the week and I promise you I was hoping to update this blog a lot sooner. We have been dealing with a little thing called RSV. It's been so awful to watch V so sick. He started getting ill last Friday and it went downhill pretty quickly from there. He's been cranky, tired, coughing, wheezing, throwing up, has no appetite. We are finally on the mend today. This is probably the very first significant illness we have dealt with since V was released from hospital last January. He's definitely had a zillion colds and sniffles, but nothing that has knocked him on the floor. RSV was absolutely brutal, and for anyone that has gone through it, you know what I'm talking about. The worst of all of it is with these breathing issues. It makes it even scarier. However, the silver lining is that the doctors finally have come to a conclusion that V's asthma has to be treated more vigorously. His pediatrician believes that if we can get his asthma under control, he will not get sick so frequently. She also hopes this will help him not get as sick when he does catch a cold. The downside is we are adding two new drugs to our already full medicine cabinet. One will be a daily medication and one will be an emergency medication. Either way, I'm happy we have a plan for treatment. It does mean more follow-ups, but at least our little boy will be breathing easier. V also got a middle ear infection during RSV. This is ear infection number five since August. At this point, tubes are a certainty at this point. He will be seen by an ENT next Thursday and we hope to schedule his tube surgery shortly thereafter. This will hopefully cut back on all the trips to the doctor with ear aches. His doctor is hopeful that this will also help his language open up. It's likely he's been having a hard time hearing. He will have a hearing screen next week as well. Some days I feel like we are on a merry-go-round of chronic illness with this little boy. His doctor calls him a very complex case and I wish you could see this child's medical chart. I highly doubt mine is as thick as his. A lot of times I feel like the only thing I'm talking about are his health. I promise there are other things in our lives, but his health is forefront right now because he's been so sick for months now. Please keep him in your thoughts. We are hoping the asthma treatment and tubes will help him feel so much better. On the 6th of February 2014, Katie Joy shares some pictures of V with RSV, which I find very fucking concerning because his head is even larger now. 
and even the doctors aren't picking it up. What is going on? If my child's head was increasing in size, I would maybe be Googling things that could cause that or do some research. Hydrocephalus. It's also called water on the brain, is a term used to describe several different problems that cause cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, to build up around the brain or to drain improperly. This causes the brain's ventricles, fluid spaces inside the brain, to enlarge. This can happen if a blockage in the brain's anatomy stops the fluid from flowing as it should. A hemorrhage or infection causes scarring within the fluid's pathways. A tumor, cyst or other mass blocks the normal pathway for fluid. Hydrocephalus Progresses over time and causes increasing pressure and stretching of tissue in the brain. If this pressure isn't relieved, it can interfere with normal brain growth and development and lead to permanent damage in the brain. Hydrocephalus. What are the symptoms? Infants may have unusually large head, a rapid increase in head size, extreme sleepiness, vomiting that is frequent and severe, trouble looking up when the head is facing forward, seizures that have no known cause. Other children may have severe headaches, often with nausea and vomiting, blurred or double vision, problems with balance, trouble looking up when the head is facing forward, problems with coordination, trouble standing or walking, loss of bladder control, extreme tiredness, irritability for no reason, delays in reaching developmental milestones, trouble remembering and focusing. I know why Janelle didn't notice, or while she was in denial, because if she drew attention to Ensley's head, the doctor would have to say, well, your child was born with marijuana in their system. Janelle would rather drink and continue doing drugs than have to explain to a doctor why her child's head was left untreated. In my opinion, Katie doesn't make sense, either does his world. But most importantly, we need to talk and we need to do this for the... Hey Katie, keep drinking yourself into oblivion. Yeah, your child having to live his life with fucking chronic illness. A struggle every day that you will never fucking understand. Because you are so focused on the toll that it's taken on your life. And Katie, that makes me so fucking sad for your son. It makes me so sad for him. Because the one thing you want when you're sick is your mum. To hold you. To tell you everything will be okay. That the, anything the doctors say is bullshit. Who cares what they say? You are your own person, V. You can be whatever you want. If you dream it, if you visualise it, V, you can make that a reality. The reality doesn't have to be the one that your mum tells you every day. Don't listen to her. Hey.